Kia ora tato, morena, et fana te no mai, haere mai. Good morning and welcome to the service for Sunday, the 19th of September. Ko Peter Norman Toku Ingoa, no Turanga Ahu, O Tira K Tamaki Makoro, Mato Ko Toku Fano, e Tinewa, Ko Ahu. Titahi Minata o Tihahi Witeriana o Etiaroa Ke Timihi Kia Koto Tiwiki Oteria Māori has been running since last Monday and it calls us to make Tereo Māori an essential part of Aotearoa for all of us. Akoa iti Akona Tia. Learn a little, use a little. Today, as we continue in the season of creation, is Sky Sunday. Sky refers to all the domains of creation above and around the earth. Sky especially refers to the domains close to earth, the wind, the clouds, the air, the atmosphere. It is important to note that the term translated heavens in the Old Testament normally means sky, not some abode of God far above. It is the sky in Psalm 19 that proclaims God's glory and God's visible presence on earth. In the traditional Māori view, the origin of our world begins with the primal couple, Ranganui, sky father, and Papatunuku, mother earth. With a love so fierce, they could not be apart. They held each other together in a loving embrace. Ranganui and Papatunuku were blessed with six male children, all of whom lived in the small, confined space between them, cramped in darkness. Each time their parents moved, a ray of light came through, but the darkness always returned. As the children grew, so did their desire to live in the light and to seek an open world. So the children gathered and decided they needed to find a way to separate their parents. Attempt after attempt was made to separate Father Sky and Mother Earth until one day the mighty Tane Mahuta, god of forests and birds, lay down on his back, pressed hard against his mother, pushed his feet up in the air against his father and tore them apart. This is entry into worship. We thank you, Sky, for your blue. Also, 
praise for what you do. Everything simple, undivided, and too ordinary to be tried as true. The sound of rain when we are warm inside, purple shadows on the mountainside, help us to notice, open our eyes, give us grateful hearts and unclenching minds, that we might be at one with the Spirit of God and at peace when our story is told, as much a part of nature as the beauty we behold. Close your eyes and imagine. Oh, how beautiful this day is. How crisp and clean the air. How clear the sky. How full of life the teeming earth. And we are alive. Yes, we feel the beat of our own hearts the pulsing of life in our veins, the rhythm of our breathing. We come into the silence of this time with gratitude for this day. We come also with our needs. Our gratitude stirs us to praise and sing, sing our thanksgiving. Our loneliness draws us into the company of others. Our restlessness draws us into these moments of quiet. Our longing for the Spirit brings us before the mystery of the holy. Our desire to heal our own wounds and the wounds of our world brings us here to renew our strength and hope. And we come into this place because we have gifts to share words of healing and encouragement for those who are burdened, songs of praise and hope, smiles of comfort and affection, deeds of love and kindness. Each of us comes to dip into the well that nourishes our hungry spirits. Each of us comes with our own cup of goodness to pour into the well. We drink together, May we be strengthened in our bonds of love and peace. And to that we say, Amen. I now invite you to join with the Lee family in singing, Where Mountains Rise to Open Skies. Yeah. 
Kia ora te whanau. I'm Lizzie Biddle, and this is a message for you all, but especially for the young and the young at heart. This week is Māori Language Week, to wiki o te reo Māori. No mai, hara mai. Welcome. Ke te pehe koutou. How are you all? Ke te pai aho. I'm fine. Or simply just ke te pai. Fine. Or maybe ke te ora aho. I'm good. Or more simply ke te ora. Good. But are you all fine? Are you all good? There are times this week when I've not been simply ke te pai. Fine. Or ke te ora. Good. Here are some other emotions that you may have been feeling over the last week. If you're stuck at home, maybe you've been feeling a little bit ho-ha, bored or fed up. And if you're feeling bored or fed up, maybe at times you'll feel a little bit hiakai, hungry. And some of you might be feeling a little bit nene, a little bit tired. Or even hiamoi, very tired. Sometimes this week I felt a little bit hu koki koki, cranky. And other times I felt a little bit ma nuka nuka, anxious. Yet at other times I felt koha, happy, and even manaki, caring. And it's okay to be feeling lots of different things right now. It's normal. But there are three things that we can focus on to help get us through these times of change. And these are love, hope, and peace. Te aroha, te whakapono, te rangi marie. However we are feeling right now, there is always love, hope and peace for us all. I'll leave you with this closing moyata that I'm sure you all know. Please join in with the singing if you wish. Aroha nui and God bless. Prayer of Awareness If there is a heaven, it is right here, right now. In this particular arrangement of nature, this happening of earth, moon and star, this constellation of instants, this laden moment, this flash of recognition, this particle of time. God is all around us. The Spirit of God is everywhere. In every blinking eye, in every pulsing possibility, in every ugliness, every beauty, in every wholeness, every part. If there is an axiom in the universe, it is life, it is love, it is death, it is hatred, it is wanting and needing to be in this crystal of creation. Thanks be to God. Amen.
reading today comes from Genesis chapter 1 verses 6 to 8 14 to 19 and God said let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters so God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome and it was so God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky, to separate the night from the day. And let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years. And let there be lights in the dome of the sky, to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. Next is the reading, Luke chapter 12, verse 54 to 56. He, Jesus, also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know what, how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why you do not know how to interpret the present time.
the sky. One of the wi most widespread motifs in creation myths is that of the separation of heaven, or sky, and earth. In Genesis, the dome of the sky was separated from the land and the seas. In the Māori creation story, the world begins with the separation of Ranganui, sky father, and Papatūnuku, earth mother. Sky refers to all the domains of creation above and around earth. Sky especially refers to the domains close to earth, the wind, the clouds, the air, the sky, the atmosphere. It is, all, it is important to note that the word translated heavens in the Old Testament normally means sky, not some abode of God far above. The Earth's atmosphere imposes the colour of the sky and it gives rise to surprising light phenomena such as mirages and rainbows. Some phenomena are so familiar to us that we often take them for granted. Why is the sky blue on clear days like today? Why are sunsets red? Why is the night black? Sunlight reaches Earth's atmosphere and is scattered in all directions by the gases and particles in the air. Blue light is scattered more than the other colours because it travels as shorter, smaller waves. That is why we see a blue sky most of the time. Have you ever lain back on the grass and looked up into the blue sky? It can be quite a rich and enriching experience. Over 200 years ago, German author Ernst Theodor Amadeus Hoffmann quite rightly observed how prone poor humanity is to dam up its minutest revenants of, of freedom and build an artificial roof to prevent it looking up to the clear blue sky. As we look to the heavens, heavens, I'm reminded, of course, of Psalm 19. This version is paraphrased by Jim Cotter. The web of the world, the whisper of a great wind passing, the caressing of strings makes music, its sighs reach the ends of the world. The stars in the heavens chant the glory of God, pulsing their praise across eons of space. From the soft radiance of a summer dawn to the stormy sunset of a winter's evening, from the darkest and wildest of mountain nights to the stillness of moonlit seas, the voice of praise is never silent, yet all without speech or language or sound of any voice. How often have you heard, lightning is the flash of God taking your picture. Wind is God going puff across a map. Rain is when God is crying. In the most biblical form, thunder is the sound of God speaking. But what in the world is God trying to say? And are these just clever explanations which manage to misinform both our view of God and our view of the sky. Whether in joke-like clarifications or act actual practice, many have tried to read the sky for messages or revelations from God. If we want to take beautiful stars or a colourful sunset or the cheer of blue summer days of indicators of a good and gracious God, we're left confronting cloudy days, stormy weather, destructive events, and wondering how they relate to God. One, other answer, one honest answer has less to do with the sky providing evidence of God's behaviour and more evidence of our behaviour. The real and unfortunate answer for what we did to deserve it more and more clearly connects to changing climate. 
where we've turned the sky more volatile and violent, to hold more moisture, to produce bigger storms and in less usual places, or made the sky fickle to avoid even a drop where wildfires scorch and we're reminded in glowing orange sunsets. What do we do to deserve it? Well, we burned coal, drove cars, ate processed food, flew jets and bought too many things from across the globe. We made the sky sad. It's more glaring with our carbon dioxide emissions. The enormous globe has an atmosphere of 11 kilometres thick. But our small human actions are able to have an effect because this is so finely tuned. I don't know if we call that part of God's glorious handwork of the heavens or observe it to observe it as the precarious nature of our relationship with the sky, where it can go from normally calm to raging and violent and vindictive at the drop of a hat. Since biblical times and probably before, proverbs and folklore have developed as a way of, for societies to understand and foretell prevailing weather conditions. Everyone at one time or another has marveled at the beautiful red and orange colours of a sunrise or a sunset. The red sky proverb has endured across cultures and centuries and modern science can explain why this is so. Red sky at night, shepherd's delight. Red sky in the morning, shepherd's warning. Since the sun sets in the west, having a clear sky in that direction typically, but not always, means that calm weather will be in store for the next day. That brings us to clouds. On earth, clouds can range from the barely visible thin wispy cirrus right up to the monstrous cumulonimbus Thunder clouds, cumulus, known as fair weather clouds because they usually indicate fair dry conditions. Cumulonimbus clouds, thunder clouds that are built up from cumulus clouds. These clouds can forecast some of the most extreme weather, including heavy rainfall, hail, snow, thunderstorms, tornadoes and hurricanes. Stratus, dull greyish clouds that stretch across and block the sky, they look like fog in the sky. They can produce drizzle or fine snow. So if you can identify the different cloud formations, you can predict the weather. And that brings me to William Wordsworth's poem, I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had bought. For oft when I on my couch I lie in vacant or pensive mood, they flash upon the inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Continuing with the cheerful interlude, think of your mind as a bright blue sky, a place where thoughts, feelings and emotions appear. Maybe appear as clouds. 
And there are times when the clouds are so dark and thick and stormy that we lose sight of the blue sky. But in reality, it is still there. It's just obscured. It's just like the idea of trying too hard to accomplish something or get somewhere. The things we want or are striving, striving for are already there. But what we focus on are the things blocking them. We don't need to actually reach out for that thing itself. We need to remove what's standing in the way. Or in the case of this metaphor, seeing past the dark clouds and remembering that the sky, the blue sky, is there, waiting for us to enjoy it. As a British author and former Buddhist monk Andy Puddicombe writes, Sometimes we get so obsessed with the clouds that we forget about the blue sky altogether, but it's still there. It's easy to forget that we're looking what that what we're looking for is already there. Let's move the clouds on. It is the wind, of course, that moves clouds. Depending on how fast the winds are blowing and the level of the clouds will determine on how fast the clouds are travelling. Wind, of course, is the movement of air caused by the uneven heating of the earth by the sun. Wind allows seeds to fall and plants to grow. Pollen is blown in the wind to give birth to new flowers that bud and create new life. The wind refreshes us on a hot day, cooling the moisture that perspires, giving us a gust of momentary ease and eventual hope. The Spirit of God as wind is ever present in creation. A wind from God swept over the face of the waters. The Spirit of God is still present in creation. It is through these earliest connections with nature and the Hebrew, that the Hebrew period that the Hebrew people experienced God. We who live in modern developed geographies have lost touch with what is becoming increasingly rarefied, the natural world. We are becoming estranged to the natural space we inhabit, losing touch with how enormously we depend on it and ultimately how we are damaging it. We are not reading the signs of the times. The spirit as wind can bring us back to a primordial earth reality. We can be in touch with nature again and realize that the spirit as wind is found in everything and everywhere. The spirit blows where it wills and at Pentecost the spirit comes like wind. The wind blows every day, it blows around us whether we can actually hear it or see its effects. The Spirit as wind moves through creation to give birth, birth to new forms of life, nurturing and protecting it. This is something we can emulate when we interact with creation. Rather than dominating creation, we need to work toward building a symbiotic relationship with it, <clears throat> in which we support each other and care for the well-being of both partners. Jesus said, you can interpret what the weather is going to do, but you can't read the signs of the times. That is something humanity has failed to do. Light pollution can disrupt ecosystems by confusing, confusing the, the distinction between night and day. Nocturnal animals, those that are active at night, may venture out during the day, while diurnal animals, which are active during daylight hours, may remain active well into the night. Illumination of the night sky by electric lights, as in urban areas, 
interferes with astrological observations and can have negative ecological effects. Migratory birds are driven off course by light pollution. They are often attracted to bright city lights, veer off course and fly towards these cities, which leads them to even more hazards. In 2019, a United States survey found that the number of bird deaths caused by building collisions could be as high as 1 billion each year. Then we have climate change, which I've mentioned before. Gases such as carbon dioxide or sulfur dioxide, which have been pumped into the atmosphere, are now causing the planet to be warmed at an alarming rate. Smog caused by the excessive burning of fossil fuels can be seen hovering over and around our cities. Just take a look at Auckland on a still day, when we are not in lockdown, of course. Yes, we have failed to understand the changes in our world. The cosmos has been crying out, but we have not heard. We have failed to read what the sky, the clouds, the air, the wind are saying. They have no voice, but they communicate in other ways. When we see birds fly across the sky and stars light up the night, once again, we are reminded that we are not alone, that everything that has brought us to this moment, all that sacred love has brought the trees, the dirt, the sky. If we believe that, we must believe that we are here to learn from one another. It is about acknowledging the voice of creation, a voice that will continue to speak whether we listen or not. Healing and restoration are desperately needed. Affirmation of Faith Communion with Earth and Sky Early spring awakens memories of a deeper cold and hopes of a warmer wetness sprouting seeds and budding branches. Grey trees on a grey sky screen eyes from all that lies waiting. The colour of a million flowers the feathers of migrating songbirds the blossoming smiles of friends. Soon, we will no longer look to the night scar stars to guide us. Soon, the path will be lit and our tasks certain. In the warming days, we will plant our future, uprooting useless skeletons of last year's harvest, breaking the clods of indifference, carefully pulling the weeds of neglect so that roots can stretch. Before the harvest moon rises and we wait again, images of still distant summer days awaken thoughts of a time when all is done that can be done. Then the harvest. Then the transformation. Then the baking. Then the bread. All we know and love is in this cycle. All that has been or will be is in this loaf, which symbolises our connectedness with the rest of creation. Take it, break it, give thanks and pass it on.
Prayers for ourselves and others, making sacred. Here we have gathered the elements of our lives. Aware and unaware, we have carried them to this place. The joy of waking and living, the pleasure found in meaningful work, the blush of health, the pain of illness, the grief of loss, and the gift of love. Some of these we have carried a long way. Some have bent our backs until our eyes could no longer see the horizon. Some have carried us upward with purpose, feathered wing and flight. All we have carried through the seasons of our lives has brought us here, to this place we make sacred by our coming together and reciting these gathering words. Come, you are welcome here. Let us now open ourselves to the sacred silence of this place. Breath of God, flowing free, flow in and through us, to cleanse and bring a new beginning, a fresh start, right relationships, and peace. Amen. Words of mission. Will you care for planet Earth? We will remember our planet home. We will nurture our planet. We will act graciously to all humanity. 
We will wonder at the beauty of dawn and sunset. We will celebrate life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Words of Blessing Blessed is the sky and all that is warm and filled with light. Blessed is the air and all that is open and free. Blessed is the earth and all that is steady and firm. Blessed is the sea and all that is deep and hidden. We give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Let it be. 